Teachers of Reddit, what's the most shocking or surprising thing you've seen going on in your classrooms? A kid stuck a craft pipe cleaner in an electrical socket. Cue a flash, a yelp, and blue fuzz everywhere. Socket and cover were both burned black and didn't get replaced for three years. The student was an eighth grader. I knew a kid who put a paperclip in an electrical socket and thought wrapping it in paper would protect him from the shock. In grade 10, the idiot had to go to the hospital because it screwed up his heartbeat. No matter what age you are, I think you should know you don't mess with electrical sockets. Back when I was in school, we had three of the six ambulance teams in the whole county called out to the school because one sunny day, someone passed the fad around that kids should hyperventilate and have someone push on their chests until they passed out. If I remember correctly, some 14 students had to be checked out and one taken to the hospital. I was a long-term sub for an art teacher that taught in the cafeteria. She warned me about a kinder kiddo named Romeo that had many issues and told me to basically never turn my back on the class while he was in it. I didn't really pay too much attention to it because I was a genius substitute. But anywho, I turned around to grab something from the art cart and I heard a gasp from the other 22 kiddos. I turned around and he was standing on the lunch table with his pants down, shirt pulled up and yelling, who wants to kiss it? My name name's Romeo. I was mortified. I'd hate to know where the kid learned that behavior. My dad is a teacher and this is his favorite story. As a PhD student, he was teaching American history at a small high school. As he was lecturing, he noticed an odd smell and an enormous football player walking toward him from the back of the class. The football player hands my dad a note which says, I have just poop poop myself. Not a word is said. My dad simply nods to the student and the student walks quietly out of the room to handle the matter. My dad kept the note for around 20 years and would occasionally ponder the grammar of poop pooping oneself instead of just pooping oneself without the extra poop. There was a strange craze of crapping in books and leaving them in the library. Somehow, nobody was ever caught. One time when we were watching a movie in class, I saw the girl next to me touching herself. Let's just say my 16-year-old body full of hormones had good material for the next six months. What movie were you watching? One day, our teacher didn't show up to class and neither did her substitute. Some kid gave a 50-minute lecture on pimpology during that time. Sounds like the kid saw an opportunity and took it. I went to a small music school where basically everyone smoked all day. One day during midterm review, our audio professor yelled at the whole class for being under the influence for about 20 minutes. Nobody knew what to do. A very large, peculiar boy by the name of Thomas was caught pleasuring himself by sticking his stuff into the pages of books and thrusting. Might I mention typical Tom, as he was referred to, was a junior in high school. Surely you have better ways of taking care of that. A student pooped in the attic and threw it all over the walls during a break, then played it off as if it wasn't him and invited people to see. He's still in school. Not from my time as a teacher, but still relevant. Way back when I was a youth, there was a guy in science class. Let's call him Dan. Now, Dan was one of those kids who, for one reason or another, failed at all challenges involving common sense. He also liked to crush up chalk and snort it during science class. About the only thing Dan was good for was soccer. He played in the school team and was regarded as our best striker. Anyway, Dan's stupidity came to a head one day during an experiment set up by one of our chemistry teachers. She had a lot large container of chlorine gas she'd procured prior to the lesson at the front of the class. She explained what she was going to do, what the gas was, and ended her explanation with a stern, do not breathe this in. Then she got distracted by something and had to leave the room for a moment. She was gone no more than a second when Dan stood, dashed to the front of the class, opened the container, and took a long, deep, hearty snort of chlorine gas. The airborne ambulance made remarkably good time getting to the school, and somehow saved Dan Dan's life, but it was a while before he came back to school, and he was a changed kid. He couldn't play football anymore. His lungs were permanently damaged, and even running short distances left him gasping for air. Not sure what became of Dan, but he taught me a valuable lesson about chlorine gas. Apparently it was used as a weapon during World War I. I can see why. I hate to say it, but this is Darwinism at its finest. 
In my classroom, we kept a television screen which can be connected to wirelessly. One day I was setting up a DVD about World War II, and it came up in the top right, Billy's iPhone connected. It then proceeded to play the infamous Paris Hilton tape. The kid was utterly shocked and later admitted it was a mistake. He was watching it in the back of the room and somehow connected it to the TV. Oh, poor Billy. <laughs> I'm a high school teacher in American Samoa, a US territory. Tattooing is a huge cultural thing. A student I know, P, comes to me before school and asks if he can hang out in my room at lunch. Sure thing, I tell him. It's pretty common for kids to grab their lunch and hang out in a teacher's room. Come lunchtime, L comes to my room and asks if P has shown up. They're supposed to meet in my room at lunch. He hasn't shown up, so she sits and waits for him. Soon after, P comes in carrying his backpack and lunch. I'm sitting at my desk eating my lunch. Suddenly, I hear a zzzz sound. As soon as I heard the sound, I recognize it. I turn my head. L is sitting at a desk with one of her sleeves rolled all the way up. P is holding a tattoo gun in his hand a mere inch away from L's arm. What are you two doing? P does tattoos, miss. He's going to do something for me on my arm. You can't get a tat in my classroom, L. P, put away your equipment. You can't give a tat in my room or at school for that matter. Tattooing being a cultural thing or not, I feel like that's a pretty brave move. I can't claim credit for this story, but it's a goodie that allegedly happened in my buddy's 4th or 5th grade class. So this 4th grader, that will henceforth be known as Conrad, apparently went on a family trip to China and came back with a pencil decorated with intricate dragon design that he absolutely adored. Like during class, he would take it out of his pencil bag and put it on his desk just to look at and admire, but never used or even sharpened it. One day, when Conrad left the room to use the bathroom or something, the kid said, Sitting on his right, who we'll call Jim, picked up the dragon pencil, stuck it in a pencil sharpener, and ground that beautiful work of art until it was just an eraser with a stub, with a tiny amount of dragon design still visible. When Conrad comes back into the room, he seats himself and looks forward, noticing what's become of his most prized possession, but doesn't say a word. He then grabs the sharpened pencil that he'd been using to write, screams, and stabs it through the hand of the kid sitting to his left, Bill, incorrectly assuming he was the culprit. Needless to say, Conrad didn't come back to class the next day, or ever again. Not sure what's good with Bill's hand. Eesh. Bill was just in the wrong place at the wrong time. I'll be honest, I was rooting for Conrad, though. I taught choir for several years to 7th and 8th graders. I've seen some stuff, man. One day, I'm assisting another music teacher in a very big school, and things are going pretty smooth. I see this one kid looking kind of gray. Then he sways a bit and starts turning green. I know where this color-changing act is headed, so I signal for the kid to head to the trash can. He made it to the can, but then threw up so violently that he sprayed it all over the walls and the double doors. I thought the sweet little sopranos that sat in that part of the room were either going to puke themselves or pass out. I had a hard time not laughing at them. So I send the kid to the nurse and go look for a custodian. I can't find one anywhere, so I have the secretary page one. Nobody shows up. I go looking again and find the head guy, old retired sailor, hiding in the kitchen doing something so he wouldn't have to clean up the puke. I tell him it's an emergency. The room was about 80 degrees as the HVAC was crap, and head to the room to help out with crowd control. Did I mention there were a about 80 kids in the room, the custodian finally shows up and starts to mop the puke up and wipe down the walls. I walk over near him and say something like, he really made a mess, huh? The old salty dog replies in full voice, gosh darn effing kids making messes all over the gosh darn place. I hate this effing place. The sweet little Sopranos were horrified. I had to walk away so I didn't lose it. Poor guy sounds like he's having a really bad day. I'm not a teacher, but my ex-girlfriend was. She had just started teaching kindergarten, and these two kids had a full-blown relationship. They would hold hands, kiss, and get angry when other kids started hollering at their partner. Weirded me the heck out when she told me. Kids start early these days. I was kind of a crazy kid in middle school, so I had this one friend. Let's call him Eric. The both of us were inseparable. Well, one day during study hall, we were both goofing off and had to be separated, so they put Eric in the quiet room. At the time, I thought it would be a neat idea to crawl through this air vent type thingy that was in the wall at knee level, which led into the quiet room right by Eric's feet. I quietly knocked out the other end and grabbed Eric by the feet, which made him scream. This, of course, got the attention of the teacher, who quickly ran 
ran over and grabbed my legs trying to pull me out of the air vent. Well, I didn't want to go peacefully, so I kept holding on to Eric's feet while the teacher kept pulling on my legs. It turned into a tug of war between my teacher and I, which I eventually won by crawling through the other end into the quiet room. I'm surprised I turned out normal. Hey, we all miss around when we're kids. Not a teacher, but one of the only memories I have from grade one was us sitting on the floor in the morning semicircle while our teacher went on about school stuff. There were about three rows to the semicircle with me sitting on the outside corner on a chair, so I could see everyone sitting down quite easily. We had this weird kid that just wasn't right. He'd belt out the national anthem as loud and off-key as possible every morning, even with everyone looking at him and not singing. So naturally, he decides that this semicircle is the perfect perfect moment to whip it out and spit all over it. Then he spits on his fingers and starts Neh. Somehow I'm the only kid that sees it. Not even the kids beside him. I sat there stunned for like 30 seconds wondering if anyone else was witnessing this and why no one's doing anything. Before the teacher noticed and snapped her fingers at him, he got the message. Props to her for not making a scene though. Kids are messed up. Not a teacher, but two kids would grope each other during class. The teacher never said anything, but it was pretty obvious, so she had to have noticed. The teacher probably just wanted to pretend it wasn't happening. My sister is a teacher. A girl had been disappearing for about 30 minutes a day in her homeroom period. After some investigation, it turns out the girl had been scheduling and giving blowies during that time. She didn't even make money off the deal either. She just gave them out of the goodness of her heart. In middle school, they had a detention in the study hall room, but the detention kids were put into separate rooms in the back with a tiny little window. There was a kid that pleasured himself in there, and the study hall teacher went in there and saw the kids aftermath all over the wall. She yelled and told all of us to go into the hall. His phone was still out with adult content pulled up on it. The kid ended up being homeschooled after the incident, and I've only ever seen him once since graduation. A lot of the stories I'm hearing here seem to involve young kids needing to learn when to control themselves. This didn't actually happen on school property, but it was pretty shocking nonetheless. Two boys were assigned to be partners for a project in school. For the sake of clarity, let's call one boy John and the other boy Fappy. They were working on the project together at John's parents' home. While there, unbeknownst to John, Fappy stole a key to the house. It seems that Fappy was into some kinky, albeit tame by today's standards, stuff. And so it was quite surprising to John's family when Fappy was found wearing John's mom's underwear and touching himself in John's parents' bed. Now, I'm not one to actually believe that a story such that one hears in the schoolyard is necessarily true. However, it just so happens that my parents were friends with John's parents. After hearing the story at school, I asked my mom about it and she confirmed it. Surprising to no one, the story caught on like wildfire and Fappy's reputation for being a cross-dressing, self-touching criminal preceded him for the remainder of his time at that high school. That's not really the shocking part though. What actually surprised me about the whole incident was how insensitive the teachers, particularly the gym teachers, were to Fappy. They were just as ruthless as the students with their name calling and such. I would go so far as to even say that they incited much of the abuse toward him and even encouraged the other students to ostracize him. As a teacher, you'd think you'd want to bring up that incident regarding that kid as little as possible. It's really just cruel to keep it going. One day, I was walking into class when I heard kids yelling and screaming like maniacs. Turns out, it was a smoke bomb brought from Mexico that left the room smoky and smelling like urine. We got our backpacks searched, but nothing was found. The kid then confessed after the backpack search, so he and the one who gave it to him left with an officer. I haven't seen them since. Ah, the classic stink bomb. I remember one of those going off in high school. My school tried to do an experiment and tried to put all the male below average grade students and delinquents into one English class taught by a female teacher. It did not go well for her. When she stepped out to use the bathroom, we emptied all the bookshelf and her desk and threw them out the window. Kids hid behind the blinds of the windows and slept. One kid missed his bus sleeping through the next two other periods. We made dominoes out of the books. She actually joined us for this one. Another time when she stepped out, we stood books up and threw 
knives and scissors at them to see if they would stick. Learned how to throw knives that day. We were on a second floor that partially looked out onto the roof of the first floor. Kids would often just leave and enter through the windows. Not sure why. Our school hall pass was just a red laminate that had hall pass crudely written on it. We broke open a locked drawer to find a lamination machine and made everyone hall passes. But the weirdest of all, we all passed and actually did fairly well in her class. I actually took a copy of The Day No Pigs Would Die Home because I liked it so much. Sounds like you had a good teacher for not only hanging in there, but actually managing to capture your attention along the way. I went to an all-boys secondary school and was 15 at the time this happened. Our class of 25 boys were coming back on a field trip in a packed minivan doing around 60 miles per hour on the motorway. The guy in the back right seat decides to announce that he's going to start pleasuring himself, and then stands up and goes through with it. There were 25 male adolescents on that bus. They weren't as shocked as the old couple in the next lane. Oh, that poor old couple. I'll never forget the look on that old woman's face as she peered into a school bus of children and proceeds to get an eyeful of Wang. The boy was expelled, rightfully so. In grade four, my friends and I decided to protest in our class during lunch period because the school replaced the chip machine with healthy snacks. At first, it was no big deal. Five or six of us just beginning to chant at our lunch monitor. But by lunch recess, it exploded into a full force riot protest. We had hundreds of kids across three campuses in a colossal hive. It was one of my proudest moments, but it quickly turned into a nightmare when the teachers fought back. They tried to hurdle us up and gave an insane amount of detentions. I was one of the lucky few to escape before the genocide, but I still think to this day about those I lost that fateful day. Eventually, the school caved and offered semi-healthy snacks like crispers and pretzels. I hope later generations appreciate the sacrifice we made, and I pray they live a more peaceful time than we did. I think our posters blown this up into some grand battle in his head, but in actuality, most of these kids probably just wanted a reason to get out of class. We had a half hour session with our mixed ability home class to start the day at my school, then all split up to go to lessons by ability streams for the rest of the day. I was in top groups for most things, but in this first hour, I generally ended up at the back of the room with the slower kids, and we started playing cards or poker dice. Never for money, though. After this had been going on for a few weeks, I was caught in a quiet corner by the teacher and thought I'd get in trouble for leading them on. Instead, she just said how it was really good for them to concentrate for that length of time on something, especially something requiring maths and patterns, but that if any of the other staff came in, to hide it all quickly. It's always nice when you think you're going to get in trouble and you just get a general thumbs up from the teacher. Not a teacher, but also a student. At the age of 12 to 13, we had math class with a temporary teacher. Let's call the teacher A. In our class, we had the typical students who did stupid things without thinking. Let's call them B1 and B2. Out of nowhere, while everyone solved their math problems and A was walking around helping the students, B1 and B2 threw their pens and accidentally dropped it to different locations. That way, they could roam free in the classroom. When they went to pick up their pens, they They'd also whip out their junk, doing the helicopter, and rubbing their junk on different furniture. It became almost like a game for them. The one who got caught first lost. How's that fun for you? It's just weird and you're creeping out everybody around you. Not me, but my parents are both teachers. My dad teaches drama and directs a school play each year. I can remember on the first night of one of these shows a few years back, he came back and said that whilst he was checking backstage during one of the set changes, he found a kid peeing into a bottle because he forgot to go to the toilet before his part. It was really funny, but shocking, because this is a really posh school. Hey, I don't care who you are, everybody's gotta pee. We had our study hall sign in in the same room that kids would serve in school suspensions. Well, one day I walked into a kid pleasuring himself and finishing all over the floor. He then zipped up his pants and walked out to a very stunned professor. Come on, guys, control yourselves! I'm not a teacher, but this happened to my friend. We were sitting in the back of the classroom, and being freshmen in the South, some of us picked up dipping tobacco. Not me, though. So my friend decided he's going to put a dip in class while the teacher was giving a lesson. If that wasn't dumb enough, a while later, the teacher's done with the lesson and we're all just chit-chatting. But I notice he's sitting in his seat to himself. Moments later, he starts gagging and coughing. 
but no one really paid attention. We were pretty loud. I go up to him and check on him, and he said he threw up the dip. It was in the back corner of the classroom, so it wasn't noticeable. I glance over his desk to see there's tobacco-ridden puke with red juice all over it. I ask him what the heck that was. Apparently, he didn't want to be caught with the dip, so he tried to make it seem like he threw up the juice instead. However, when he noticed that wasn't going to work either, he just left it. After I processed how stupid he was, the bell rang and we all left. Throw up still on the floor. I mean, in your situation, I guess you guys just call that one a win, right? When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications. Put the playlist on in the background to finish listening to all the stories, linked at the top of the description. And if you like Am I the Genius, give Am I the Jerk a shot, linked in the description as well. Either way, thanks a lot for watching, and we'll see you guys next time.